friends. So today we are at the Echo Science Center in Burlington, Vermont. They just opened back up. We're super excited to be here. There's some renovations going on, but we're gonna show you what we can and the animals and species that are here. So we're gonna take you along. Okay, so I think we're actually going to do a project here at the STEM Cafe. <laughs> I love it. Um, so you folks can sit at any table okay. that you want to. Um, any table that has a tray, and we can get started. Awesome. Where cool. do you want to sit? Uh, let's sit here. Okay. Um, so today we are messing with colors and pigments um, and chemistry. Okay. So we're essentially going to be, have you heard of chromatography? No. No. <laughs> okay, great. So that's what we're going to be messing with today is chromatography. So um, on the table we have three sheets that have three separate activities. Um, so they're labeled one, two, and three. If you kind of pull them on up. Okay. One, two, and three. Perfect. Um, and these just kind of set the stage in a linear format for you to check out. Um, but first, let's explore with hidden pigments. Okay. Um, so you can pick up one of your rounds of filter paper. And we recommend, the colors that we recommend for this first stage are going to be green, orange, brown, and black. Okay. Um, I really like using brown for this. Okay. Um, black is also Here, really, you want to really use cool. brown? Sure. I'll do black. Um, and we're going to draw a small circle right in the center. Fill it in or just a circle? Um, that's your choice. I like to draw without filling it in. I know some folks like to draw with filling it in. Okay. Should I leave the marker that I used out? Sure. Or? Okay. That way you know which one you used? Okay. Excellent. And now we're going to use this really fancy substance, very important, called water. <laughs> um, so you can go ahead and pull that top off and put two to three drops right in the center um, in between your outline, and we're gonna see what happens. Do you wanna do yours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said in the center? Yep, right okay. in the center. We'll give you the best outcome. You have kind of like a spaceship thing going on. I do. <laughs> uh -huh. It kind of looks like a mountain with like a sunset Whoa. in the back. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, so what are you folks seeing? Mine almost looks red now. Yeah. Yeah, you've got some red coming out over there. That's really cool. Look at mine. Let's see. Yours has like blue tints. Yeah, that's super cool. And you, you and some purple. You used black, right? Mm-hmm. So does this it only awesome. work with the dry erase marker or any marker? So uh, so what's funny is it, it won't work with dry erase. So we have a dry erase marker here. Okay. Uh, and you can actually go ahead and give that. Nothing's it happening. Pretty much just stays where it is. Huh, so, that's interesting. Yeah, so because of the chemical format of dry erase markers, um, and I haven't confirmed this, but I think they make it so it's um, so they actually don't they don't interact with water. Mm -hmm. Which is why if like you spritz something on it, it doesn't come like, dripping down right. the wall. You actually have to wipe it. Uh, And we also have some picture, if you folks are into organic chemistry, we have some, <laughs> some photos of molecules here. Oh, very cool. Right? But, um, so this is what they do for... Um, oh, okay. So somebody went and colored in the colors so they, you know, wouldn't fade away. Yeah. Um, you said this was done with leaves? These are leaves, yeah. So they took this and did um, sugar maple and white oak. Can I say? Yeah. And they colored in where the bands came out. Oh. Um, so they went fade over time. That's really cool. So we're learning about chromatography and we're gonna make some ornaments. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like before we start. And then when we finish. So this is my ornament before I put water on it. And now we're gonna put water on it and see what happens. That's true, the water did push it. However, the water pushed all of them. So why did you always need more of this? And this is my ornament after I put water on it. That looks awesome. Super cool. I love it. Here is mine. I did stars. I love how it came out.
Yeah, just about anything that they can get in their mouth. Mostly small, probably not a rabbit or something. But bird's eggs, that's another one. These guys are good climbers, yeah? Can they eat birds? They can eat birds too. They're really good climbers. And I'll show you a cool picture of this thing on the tree in a bit. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, I was going to talk about that. We'll go right to this slide. So when a snake eats a big egg, this is a black rat snake eating, looks like a chicken egg. <laughs> Don't let it into your chicken coop. Um, it's able to, its jaw has these like elastic hinges. So it's able to open really, really wide. And then if you notice here, the chin is not connected. You can feel your chin, it's connected. On the snake, it's not connected, so we can, it's not open. It's lower jaw hinges like that. And then they're able to work in something like an egg down into their esophagus and crush it with the muscles of their esophagus. So they actually eat the eggs whole. Yeah, so we talked about what they eat. They can eat birds if the birds aren't very good. Here's my favorite snake to hold here. It's really very sense of um, hunting and figuring out their environment. It's kind of with their, with their tongue. But it's not exactly the same as smelling. Yes, there we go. A little more relaxed. All right, I'll show you a few more slides about this snake, and then we can, we can come up and meet them a little closer. So when the baby rat snakes are born, how do you guys think snakes are born? Yeah? Some are born from an egg. Rat snakes are. Were you going to say something? question. I mean, probably just, you know, in terms of animals surviving, eating your own eggs would probably not be a good survival mechanism. So, so I think that you know, mama snakes have some way of knowing, you know, not to eat their own eggs. And we can talk about the eggs a little bit. A lot of snakes actually bear live young, especially in cold places like Vermont. Because there's not a long season to incubate the eggs in some warm substrate or soil, rock. Where do you guys think black rat snakes lay their eggs? Anybody have an idea? Yeah? In the habitat? In the habitat <laughs> places. Where do you think? Where would be, what do you find near farms and barns and things like that? Yeah? Maybe in a field, like, but under something I'm thinking. Yeah? Where? In some old hay, maybe, or some compost. You might lay their eggs in a compost pile, or a rotting stump, something like that, under some rocks. The baby rat snakes are look different, right? They're a little gray and black. And you can see, when you see this guy closer, you'll see his pattern is a little different. An adult rat snake is totally different. And uh, snakes have a couple different kinds of scales, keeled scales, which have a ridge running through them. And some people hypothesize helps them to climb. And then there's smooth scale snakes. This is a picture, there's a couple pictures of black rat snakes climbing. So they can really go straight up a tree. Yeah, he's pretty exciting. Man. Well, if you want to come up in groups and um, at six feet away, you're welcome to come out. No, we can't, we can't do it, we can't touch on you, but yeah. One group at a time, let's do it. Look at the bicycles. Were these found in the lake? Yeah. There's mussels all over them. Holy crap. That's 24 months. Oh, so this has been in there the longest. Yeah, so it's 3 months, 12 months, and 24 months. Dang! What's the holdup? Rotate the pipe on the wall and observe how zebra mussels affect the flow of water. Give it a try. Ready? Yep.
Whoa. <laughs> and I did want to say that every um, area has sanitation spots, so I don't even feel uncomfortable touching this because I just washed my hands and I'm going to wash my hands again when I leave. Exactly. It's kind of nice that you can still touch things and see what's happening. This is super cool. This is really cool. Do you want to try it? Yeah. Here, do you want to go sanitize and then I'll give you the camera? Yep. All right, Jen. What's the hold up? All right, so zebra muscle specifically is what it's like? Yep. Is that what these all are? Yeah. That's what's all over the bikes, hon. Look how it's all getting stuck. All the cool. Yeah. It says zebra mussels routinely clog intake pipes along Lake Champlain, forcing plant managers and homeowners to install expensive controls. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you see this one opening his mouth down there? Yeah, come here. He's doing some funny faces. Look at him. Hey, little guy. This one's doing it too. Look. Look at him. He's talking. He can just play. He's talking. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hi. What are these? These are lake trout and Atlantic salmon. So these are like things you could pull. So something interesting that we learned um, when we went on a sail was that Lake Champlain actually has some saltwater fish in it um, because of the... Um, they used to be connected to the ocean, and then after time, it um, basically like closed itself off and became a lake entirely. But in that time, there's I think two different types of species that still live in the lake that are saltwater creatures that you actually can catch if you're out fishing, which is so. Spurgeon cool. was one of them. Yes, they're saltwater spurgeon. And it's the reason why there's a ton of seagulls here. Because if you're in the water, I think anyway, I think you can still smell like, it smells like salt water to me. Like it definitely being out on the sailboats and stuff is dead. But these are cool. <laughs> so we've talked about Champ a lot um, because that is like the biggest legend. Um, it's kind of like the Loch Ness Monster of Vermont, which is pretty cool. So this is the legend of Champ. Um, there's all different stories about it, and you can read a lot. So some people have drawn what they think Champ looks like. There's some sketches over here. I like that one. I think it ate some people. <laughs> There's some fossils. This is like a rough drawing of what people have seen in the past. And some little stuffed animals. Very cool. So this was a part of a boat um, that was um, taken from the bottom of the lake. And you can see it has um, some of those zebra mussels that we saw on those bikes. Um, Oh, Jen's telling me that there's sturgeon, so let's go check that out. These are some big fish. <laughs> Look at those big fish. Look at all the baby ones in there. Man, what is that thing in the back? It looks like a catfish. It does look like a catfish. He's sleeping. He's just giving up. <laughs> Is that his gills? I'm trying to see. On his side? Yeah, you can kind of see. Him, like, look at him opening and closing. Yeah. Look at, look at. Look at that one. It's massive. Yeah. I'm trying to see, like, what you can see. Like, it looks like his internal organs. Hi. <laughs> Fish love me. <laughs> 
We have a fish whisperer on our hands. All right, you want to go see what else we can find? Okay. Oh my. Snapping turtle. That is a cool looking turtle. Look at this guy. Hey, this buddy. This is cool. What is on him? Hi, bud. <laughs> hey, so buddy. Cool Hi. How's it going? Are you having a good day? You saw a lot of friends today, huh? Are you happy that we're back? He's yeah. really cute. <laughs> I don't know. Is he he kind of has a sloth face. So, are turtles reptiles or amphibians? Are they reptiles? Mm-hmm. I don't know, they like reptiles. But he's so cute, look at his little tail. Look at it, he looks like a dinosaur. He'd bite your face off. <laughs> We're going upstairs now. We're going to check out what's up there. I think there's a movie playing up here. It might be over now, though, because we went and saw that snake. Look. Big old fish. And now we are upstairs. Let's check this out. Look, it's the animal care. Oh yeah. There's that snake we just saw. Hey buddy. Is he back on that? Yep. <laughs> And this is all the other animals. There's some turtles in here. They're little so babies. Tiny. The little babies in there. Very cool. Go, go. Do it. Swim. Go, fast. go, go. <laughs> Kick around. It was so cute. <laughs> yeah, these guys are adorable. Let's get a turtle. Nah, I'm good. Could this puppy be in your yard? Hmm. It's called a mud puppy. Where is it? I don't see him. Well, he oh, there like he is. He blends really well. Oh, he yeah. is right down here. Hey, bud. There might be two in here, actually. I think that's what it is. Is that what this is? Oh, yeah. There's another one right there. That one's tight. Look at Yeah, that's kind of gross. <laughs> Jen knows this all too well. <laughs> I am not a stink pot. <laughs> this is called the stink pot. Where are you, bud? Oh, there he is. Hey, stinky. Hi, stinky. Oh, he's running away. He knows I'm making fun of him. This guy's super cool. This is called a brook trout. Look how colorful. I like all these spots. Look at that tail. Hmm? This guy's blue. super cool. He's he got like a pink. Rainbow. I know. I think the rainbow fish was written about this guy. <laughs> You're super cute. Bye. All right, so Molly's going to be on the Weather Channel. got to hurry to get your report ready for broadcast so quickly. Um, pick a new story. We're going to pick the lake for the farming. Okay. Thanks for helping us out today. Now, before you start, let me give you a few helpful tips. First, stand on the mark on the floor over there in front of the green wall. Now, if you follow the script, the words will show up on the monitor below. Or, feel free to just make up your own news report. Begin your report after the countdown and speak nice and loud and clearly so I can hear you. Don't forget to smile. Oh, and the most important thing, have fun. Okay, get ready. Here comes the countdown. Phosphorus pollution in Lake Champlain has been in the public spotlight in recent years and not in a good way. Excess phosphorus in the lake contributes to cyanobacteria or blue-green algae blooms that result in the closure of beaches, putting a damper on summertime fun. Excess phosphorus comes from a variety of sources, including wastewater treatment plants, suburban lawns, and eroding stream banks. But studies show that a majority of the phosphorus in Lake Champlain 
comes from farms. Manure and chemical fertilizers intended to feed farmers' crops often run off into Lake Champlain. But crop and soil scientists from UVM Extension say that best management practices can reduce the input of phosphorus from farms and that many Vermont farmers are hard at work testing new methods. Our Lake News reporter is live at the Oliver Family Farm in Shoreham with more on this story. Thank you, Celine. I'm here in Shoreham where the Oliver family is leading the charge in lake-friendly farming methods. Laneways, like the one behind me, keep animals out of muddy areas as they travel between the barn and pasture. Similar fencing is used to keep livestock out of streams. The family tells me that managing animals this way reduces soil erosion, a major source of sediment and phosphorus in Lake Champlain. Assistance programs have enabled families like the Olivers to implement best practices that help keep unwanted nutrients out of our local waterways. <laughs> this is Barbara. This is Philip. Um, it includes manure collection systems, covered cropping and vegetative buffers. That is the latest Lake News. Please stay tuned for This is actually really great that they have this. You can go in this little pod, have some privacy. And now Molly's going to send her weather report to herself. Well, actually, it was more of a cow report, but she's sending it to herself. Champlain is so fun, but it's currently closed because of COVID. But it you is get like a little play area. Little idea. They have cute little cafe. What it looks like in here. I love it. It's so fun. It's a good time. Check out these butterflies. What is it you're doing? So we are going to listen to the rocks. We are going to gently hit each chert rock with rubber mallet and see which one sounds most like a bell, which is pretty cool. I didn't think rocks could sound like bells. That one's high pitched. What is that? That one's kind of high pitched too. Yeah. And they're making it really convenient because here's the sanitation station. Clean hands. <sighs> we'll take a quick look at our friends outside out here. And you can see our Whistling Man Schooner Company friends out there. I'm sure they're having a beautiful day out on the lake. Whoa! That is actually really cool! Swing your leg like that again. Like that? Yeah, do that again. That's really cool. <laughs> they're what? Hi friends, so today we are in front of the Long Nose Bar <laughs> and the Bowfin Aquarium. Look at all these guys. It's interesting that they all stay. These guys are all like protecting the bottom. <laughs> Look at them. They're like all looking at us. They're like, leave them alone. <laughs> this is pretty in here. some ASMR for you. <gasps> I might need this book. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> this, this is really cute. These are all different champ things. And then echo and little patches and pins. Well, that's very cute. We may have to, we may have to get that. Jen's gonna read it. I'm gonna go check out the rest of the stuff they have here. <laughs> this is pretty cool.
so they have lots of toys and science stuff for kids. The Leaf Champ, I believe. Science is for everybody. Lake Champlain. Ooh, this is super soft. I found something for your um, keys. Yeah, that's very cute. I would put that on my keys because <laughs> I love Champ. Some slime. We all love slime. Dino slime? Heck yeah, dino slime. It has that. little dinos inside. Well, that's awesome. It's sparkly. Probably a big mess. <laughs> Every parent's dream. Lots of very interesting books on nature. Some butterfly books over here and some butterfly shirts. Some more science projects to do over here. This is really cool. It's an inventor's box. Whoa. With a bunch of different projects to do. Can we get a science project? <laughs> And then, of course, a bunch of little Beanie Baby guys over here. Super cool. This one's a chemistry kit. We might have to get that. <laughs> the Extreme Color Chemistry Kit. Yeah. Look at this one. Ooh, we can make a volcano. volcano. Prehistoric sea creatures. That's Speaking cool. Of which, uh, yeah. friends! So we are back from Echo. We stopped and got some yummy pizza. And I just want to show you a couple of the things that we bought um, from the gift shop. Here Add is it. our yummy pizza. Mm mm mm. Taste it for you. Make sure it's good. Mmm. <laughs> yep. It's good. It's not poisonous. Jen picked out this super cool build and create robotics set so we'll probably be working on that today we got this super cute champ and me by the maple tree book we got this echo magnet for our car and this shirt i had to get because one i love champ and two it is the softest material i've ever felt so it was much needed and that's it